Hello everybody, it's Karen from Be Creative and I'm back with another fun make and take project. How about all these projects in this box? Fun, fun! Bunch of slimline stuff and ours is a fun floral card. So all you're gonna need, as it says in your little supply booklet, is something to color with, be it colored pencils, water-based markers, alcohol markers, whatnot. I'll show you a couple different techniques when we get into the project, but everything else pretty much was in your kit. You've got your card base, you've got a fantastic stamp set from Hero Arts. You've got, what is in there? Glue dots, I think? Um, what else? Ink pad, all kinds of stuff just easy to put it together. Now, if you have a blending tool, that will be handy. If you don't, if you have a, any kind of makeup sponge, not the best, but a great alternative to get you by, because I do want to talk about a little bit of blending also. And if you have any low-tack tape to mask off, if not, we'll talk about that when I get into the project, um, and maybe you can be inspired to do some other fun techniques on other cards, because that's what it's all about. Yes, you're making a project, but you're also hopefully inspired to learn some new techniques and techniques and try them on other things. So that's kind of the goal. So before we get into it, I do want to say, of course, we have our lovely show, virtual show specials, which I think are at the bottom here, but I will make sure I flash those at the end of the video because I don't want you to miss out. Miss out. I think we're doing 20% off all adhesives and 20% off all um, markers by Spectrum Noir, be they water-based or alcohol-based. So that's a great savings. And now that is on top of if we have anything on sale. So particularly in adhesives, we're kind of known for adhesives. We have pretty much every brand you could ever want or hope to stick down or take it back up. And some of the things are in bundles and we have some special buys that are already heavily discounted. You can take that coupon code discount off of the sale price too. You're double dipping. I know, that never happens. So make sure you take advantage of that at shopbecreative.com. So what else? I think that's it. We just need to get right into the project. So, and as always, if you're, if you know, if I'm going a little fast for you, that's the beauty of the videos. You can go back and watch it anytime. You can screenshot if I'm zooming in on something um, and come back later. Never feel rushed. Take it at your own pace. Um, use the supplies you're comfortable with while being inspired with maybe some new techniques. So that's the Goal. We want to make it fun. This is our hobby. It's not stressful. So let's get into it with this fun summer slimline card. So let's get right into our project. You got your project kit, which you got a piece of cardstock, um, alcohol marker cardstock, actually. You got a whole box of adhesive dots. You got this really beautiful Hero Arts clear stamp set. A lot going on here, a lot to color, a lot of great sentiments. And you got an ink pad. You either got yellow or you got orange. Doesn't matter. I gave you one of those. I think most of you probably have orange. So we'll talk, we'll work with that one. So let's start. Well, let me start first of all by saying, no, there wasn't a die cut in your kit. However, we do have a limited number of the die cuts to match. So if you are one of those who you absolutely do not want to fussy cut it, that's just fine. That's fine. There is a die available. So we have that um, in our expo category. So you can take advantage of that. All right. So let's get our paper folded. I did fold this down. Let's move that out of the way. I folded this down. Now, if we're doing a slim line, we do want to trim this because an eight and a half piece of paper doesn't make an exact slim line. It does give you, you know, the basics, but you're going to have a little extra. See how I've got a little extra hanging off on the bottom there? So you're going to want to trim it a couple inches because a slim line is basically going into a number 10 envelope, like a bill paying envelope. And so you need it a little bit shorter. So you need it nine and something is the full um, length of that. So this was like eight and a half by 11. I'm holding this, let me think, portrait. You'd fold it in half. And then you're going to trim the bottom to get that slimline shape. So the first thing we want to do is to create this lovely blended background that's either going to be yellow or orange, depending on which ink pad or maybe an ink pad of your choice. So what you will need from your uh, stash of supplies is you will need some kind of a blending tool. If you don't have a blending tool, fear not. Yes, you can use a makeup sponge. It's not going to be ideal. You're going to struggle a little bit. But it's an option if you don't have it. I totally understand that. Now, we do have these available because I think a blending tool is just absolutely essential. So to start to create this look, now I have this as my, well, let me get the sample out here, actually. 
Here's my sample and I used yellow for my samples just so we can see what we're doing here can we everybody see everything yes indeed now what i did i want to get this masking i want to mask it so i can have this border it looks like i have like a piece of cardstock or or something that's mounted onto the white it's not it's all in the blending and i want to achieve that so what i did with this orange i want to show you something important i masked this with the wrong type of tape. And I did it on purpose just to show you. I got a tape that's not a brand we sell to try it out that said, oh, it's low tech, right? And then when I ripped it off, can you see that? Here, let me hold, where can I, here, I'm gonna hold it up really close. If this will focus, that would be great. There it is. Do you see how it's ripped? When I took that tape off, it ripped my card. Even though it's low tech tape, they lied. So no, no, let's talk about the brand you do want to use when you're masking because um, low tack type tapes are not all created equal and you are going to do a lot with it. You can anchor down die cuts, you can hold down stencils, all kinds of stuff with your low tack tape, but yes, you can mask so that you can blend inside an area and leave a white border. So what am I using today? I'm using, it's called the purple tape. Very straightforward. Purple tape from iCraft and it comes in a giant size like this. So it's a one and a half inch width by 15 yards, it will last you a very long time. So I have a roll that's open here. So let's get this masked off. Here, I'm gonna turn it sideways just so I don't cut it off here. So I'm just gonna take my tape and eyeball it so it's longer than my card. And the hardest part is gonna be centering it because I'm not a good measure. I know some of you really are, but I'm just not that person. So I kind of eyeball things and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't but I don't like to stress out about like, oh, it's gotta be exact. And now if you wanna get creative and mask off some diagonal stripes, hey, go for it. This is your card, it's not my card. So I'm gonna eyeball, I did, what was what is that, like a half inch or something like that? So I'm gonna eyeball the same on the other side. I'm gonna mask that off too. There we go. And now I need to do the edges. Let's get this tape going, oh my goodness. It's low tech, but it wants to stay on the roll. Isn't that great? Struggle, struggle. Okay, there's always something, right? Here we go. So I've got a piece here. And again, with the right distance, that looks about right. Sealing that down. And I'm not afraid to really crease it because I know it's going to come off because it's good tape. And I'm not going to rip my paper because that would be tragic, right? So let's see here. And I'm eyeballing this and it may not be perfect, but that's okay. That's okay. We're having fun. This is our hobby. It's not supposed to be perfect. Okay. So I've masked this off. I have my blending tool. Um, let me go ahead and use, well, let's use yellow just for kicks. You may have orange, you may have yellow and I'm going to get this blended. So a couple ways to go. Let's first talk about how we blend. I have a piece of um, cardstock just hanging out here. There he is. Oh, and my tape's coming into view here. So I can't really move this because I taped it to the table. But when I blend, what you don't want to do, I've got my little doodad. Um, I can either, you know, buff it to get the ink or I can spounce it, either one. What you don't want to do is make a blob and then expect to blend that because it will not blend. Do you see that? It will not blend. You have to do those light circular blended strokes before your hand even hits the paper in order to get that soft blended background without big blotchy circles. And that's really your biggest challenge here. Okay, and now I should say too, on my sample, you can kind of see in here, can you kind of, if I peek, I didn't go all the way through, I left it kind of variegated towards the middle, so it's kind of like dark going lighter. It doesn't matter, you can do the whole thing solid or you can make it kind of airy towards the middle. Totally up to you. So I'm gonna get my ink on here and now before my arm even hits the paper, I'm doing those soft strokes to get a nice soft blend. You see how I did that? So then I don't get the big splotchy circles. Just like that. And the more you do an area, the more filled in and deep and dark it's gonna be. So it's just kind of up to you how much you wanna do. How's everybody doing? Drop me a comment or two. I am live on the comments and would love to answer your questions or would love to know where you're watching from or what you're doing. How's your weather? What's going on in your town this weekend? Anything besides 
cropping. Okay, this is pretty fairly filled in. Yes, it's going to be a little bit blotchy. Actually, on the video, it probably looks very blotchy because I know it doesn't necessarily translate very well when we when we film it for whatever reason. It like it's that high def, right? It brings out every imperfection, but that's fine. It's not supposed to be perfect. And in fact, I mean, I could get really creative with this. For example, let's say I did a bit of yellow in here, right? Just showing you for fun. And I did all this yellow. And I had, say, you know, pink or orange or something else. I could come in and add a little bit of that to it too and make kind of a two-tone thing. See how I did two colors? So you can do that kind of thing and be super duper creative with it. You can do that. You can totally do that. In fact, here's another card I did for a different occasion. And look at the background I did. I did a combination of pink and orange and just blended that out. I masked the border and did that. Look at that background. It's kind of fun. It looks like sherbet ice cream. And then I popped on a flower, different stamp, popped it on top. So you can do, you can combine colors and create some nice soft effects. All right. So I've got that all blended. Let's see. Let's peel our tape and see how I did. Ooh, look at that. And it's just like butter. It's peeling up with no issues at all. Look at that. It's not ripping anything. I love this tape. It's phenomenal. Look at that. That was so easy, you guys. My goodness. So I've got my lovely border. It looks like I mounted a piece of cardstock on top and I used my inks and I minimized how much cardstock I'm using too, which is, you know, it's kind of a money saver long term. You could do lots of different, like I said, some diagonal stripes, um, all kinds of fun things you can do by masking and, and adding the inks or markers or things you already own to create some fun backgrounds. All right, it's time to work with our stamped images. And in this case, I did the same stamp three times and I just twisted, I varied the colors, I colored it, and I twisted the way I positioned the stamp on the card so they looked a little unique. See how the, the foliage is aiming different directions each time? That's how I did it. Then I did that sentiment, which will pop up later as well. So let's do an image and talk about coloring and coloring choices and all that good stuff. So I'm going to use my, I have the precision stamp uh, press from Couture Creations. We have this on our website. It's uh, a great alternative if you don't have a Misty, if you didn't want to fork out the million dollars for the Misty, which you can't even get anymore, or the Tim Holtz press, which is also obsolete, can't get it. This is a great option to have a press where you're going to get that nice impression every time. So I've got, let's see here, here's my stamp set. Really beautiful detailed stamp set. I love that. Let's get, oops, I got an open one right here. Here's my open one. So I'm going to take off that big main image here. Now what I like to do too on any of my clear stamp sets because a lot of times they won't uh, stamp, I mean outlines not as much, but the stamp sets where they're filled in and the ink kind of does the coloring for you, they tend to be really like they repel the ink, particularly the water-based inks, which is what I'm going to work with because I want to color it with a variety of markers. But um, in order to get that ink to not repel, um, I tend to take a pencil eraser and I kind of erase my stamp to start to kind of get it a little more gritty, a little more tooth to it, not as slick. And then the ink is not as likely, it still might, but it's not as likely to beat up on my stamp and then not stamp clearly or cleanly. So I've got that all treated. I'm going to peel this off and I will be, what I do to make it easy since I'm doing three distinct images, I did cut three distinct pieces of white cardstock to work with to keep them all separate, make it easy for myself. So I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to, I have, it comes with little magnets, which is handy so it doesn't move around. And I'm going to figure out what way it goes like the texture side down that's how it's going to stamp I get it positioned and then I mount that stamp on the stamp press like this right and now it's all set to go whoops that wasn't good here let's get that back on there okay now I got my stamp mounted and I should be good to go so I'm going to ink this up with some um, memento ink it's kind of my favorite and you know what if it doesn't stamp nice and dark and deep I don't worry about it because honestly, the outlines are not what you want to focus on. It's the colored image, really. So I'm going to get that stamped. Do -do -do. See how I did? Oh, well, that stamped nicely the first time. So I'm all set. All right, I'm good to go. Let's set this aside here. 
And now let me grab some markers and talk about how I color um, and the choices I make. So I grabbed a huge variety of markers because I don't feel like you need to stick with just one thing. I mean, you really don't. Uh, it's all about color for me. So yes, I'm mixing my media. It's not a no-no, it's a yes, yes. So I have a variety of, I've got some alcohol markers, Spectrum Noir, which is the regular alcohol marker with like a nubby little nib on it, like a bullet nib, that's what I'm trying to say. I've got, so I've got like a few of those. And then I've got a couple of these Tri-Blend Brush, which these are phenomenal if you're looking for an alcohol marker that's really affordable in a brush tip. Uh, this guy gives you three distinct pens in one with a dark medium and light shade that'll actually blend together. Uh, so that's kind of fun. So I've got a couple of those I pulled. And what else? I also pulled, I've just got like a regular old water-based marker from Zig, a brushable marker, um, because I like the hot pink. So that's what I pulled. And that's what I'm going to make work. So let's see what we're doing here and talk about color. So here's my sample. I did do some blending with the... Um, the greens in here, uh, you can kind of see, let me aim it up here. In some of the, these greens, I did some blend, alcohol marker blending because those were alcohol markers. But in the regular flowers, I mean, I blended a little bit here, but by and large, I just did single color. I don't want to, we're not doing a whole lot of blending today. This is not a coloring class as much as I'd love to color with you all. We just want to get this filled in to get our card assembled. So you can take your time um, later and, and do that. You can do lots of blending and make lots of unique choices. I did just kind of a more of a monochromatic look to keep it really straightforward for all of you because I know um, many of you have been coloring forever and many of you maybe have not or maybe you're just working with colored pencils today. That's fine too. Whatever it takes to get some color down, right? Okay, so looking at this, let's see here. I don't even know which way I want to go. Okay, let's take a look at some of the the leaves, let's start here. I mean, it's just a matter of picking some colors and kind of going with it. I've got a really light green here and I'm just gonna get some color down. Color, color. Yes, yes, right? I'm just gonna get it in there. And I'm actually not too worried about going outside the lines because I am gonna trim this down. I'm not using, yes, as I said earlier, there is a die cut that matches, so you can purchase that separately, but if not, you can just fussy cut that out. And I'm just, because it's such a small area, I'm not gonna do a one, two, three blended as I would traditionally. I'm just gonna add some of that dark in here. I'm just gonna go from light to dark. So I did light everywhere. I'm just gonna do my dark at the base, just a touch. And then I'm gonna come back to my light color and dragging from the dark into the light, I'm just gonna blend that up slightly. See how it dilutes it and takes it dark to light? That's all I'm doing. How fun is that? I think these are, it looks like eucalyptus or something like that, yeah? Fun, fun. All right, so I've got just a little bit of color down now. So we wanna continue that through. I've got some over here that I missed. Let's do that too. Do, do, do. do you guys, when you, um, when you craft, I should ask this, craft, do you, watch TV at the same time, like put on a movie, like a Netflix show? Do you listen to music or do you like it just like you stay focused? Do you like to craft with other people? Like get together with a bunch of friends and do it and chit chat and munchy and snack? Problem is I get my hands like, you know, if I'm eating Cheetos and then yeah, it, this will look, the rest of my project will look like this because you know, I'm snacking. So I have to try and not snack when I'm doing this. Okay, so I've got some of those greens now, down. Now I'm gonna go, you know, a completely different direction with maybe another color. This is uh, just a regular Spectrum Noir marker. I'm not blending this. And I'm just gonna do some dark tones. I am looking forward to getting out and not crafting in my house because that's what I've been doing for what, 15 months now? I've been crafting in my house. I don't know about you. Um, it's a little much. I really miss the camaraderie of all of us getting together. And I think, you know, I'm hoping in 2022 to maybe see some of you in person. That would be fun. I'd love to teach again and get out there. So we're going to continue with all this virtual stuff this year and hoping for better days ahead when we can all just gather again next year. I think that would be a lot of fun and, you know, if you'd like specific classes, I 
love, love, love to hear feedback of what you would like to see. Because I think teaching is just really fun for me. I never thought I would teach anything in my life. It's really not my thing. Um, or, I th or so I thought. And now I've been doing it for, I don't know, 10 years or something. Calligraphy I've done for about 30 years. And I just, it, I find it's just so much fun. I love just joking with you all and just putting it all together. Just, I love it. I do. And I kind of miss that. Because it's not as fun to just do it in my house and there's nobody here. <laughs> I mean, except, you know, my family, which they're not as crafty, right? Does anybody else have that problem? So I've got some of that green going on. So I did two tones of green. Now those baby flowers, the little daisies, I'm going to do in a bright yellow. I've got the yellow going on. And again, I stamped in Memento Black. It's a water-based, dye-based, water-based marker. Because when we use alcohol markers we stamp with the opposite of alcohol ink. So what's opposite of alcohol? It'd be water or dye base. So you don't want to do something like stays on because that's a solvent ink pad, which is solvent means alcohol and it will blur and bleed along with. Now, yes, one of my markers in uh, my stash here that I showed you is a water base, but I'm just going to use it so sparingly. I don't think it's going to run and I don't think I'm going to have a problem. That's why I just, I picked the ink that would most closely go with what I was doing. That's how I picked it. Let's go into that water base. What should I do? I'm going to do that one in this poppy here. And I'm going to do the lighter end of that pink. And I just try and stay away from, you know, the harsh lines. And I should be good. See how I just kind of drag that in there and minimize the exposure onto the inky edge so then I don't bleed it. So I'm just kind of coming in. Da, 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 da. Get that all down. How lovely is that? Yeah. And, you know, I could see doing this lovely bouquet stamp in purples, purples and blues and lavenders. I could see that. Um, I kind of did the more traditional, you know, California poppy type oranges, yellows, wildfly, wildfly, I can't speak, wildflower, not wildfire. We have plenty of those in California, but wildflower is what um, I was aiming for with these hot tones. I thought it'd be kind of fun, right? But yes, you could do it in a whole variety. You could do the yellows and oranges more, less pinks and reds. It's all up to you. So I'm just showing you here. I'm going to take you through one image and not do all three because they are going to be identical. Honestly, I'm just going to vary up the colors. So now I've got that down. Now, if I want to deepen any of it, sure, I could come in with the other edge of my marker and add some deeper tones to some of this here. A little bit of like, you know, faux shading I'm doing. I could do that and get that center. I could get that kind of dark too. And then come back with my light and I could blend some of this out. Sure, why not? And yeah, you get a little bit of bleed, but it's not terrible, yeah? Is everybody still with me? So I'm just getting that kind of blended out a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's lovely, yeah? I need a little more dark in here too. I feel like this one's not dark enough. Okay. So yes, as you can see, you can blend with water-based markers. Don't tell anybody. It's my secret. You can do that. All right. So I've got a little bit of that going on. Let's deepen that here. Fun, fun. Okay, that'll work. And now we've got a couple other flowers too. What am I doing? I've got a really, I forget what color this is. So let's see. Oh, I got a light. Yeah, let's do this guy in more of like a, what would that be? Like a Texas rose? Lovely, like a peachy orange, kind of fun. And get that filled in. Okay. Who has started their Christmas projects yet? Anybody? I mean, I haven't. I really haven't, because that would just be a little much for me. And you know what I realized? This is kind of like Where's Waldo, too. The more you color, the more you realize what you missed. Okay? So, for example... I did all those eucalyptus leaves, and now as I start coloring more, I see, oh, I missed one right here. So it's kind of like a Where's Waldo. And same with this little pink flower here. I think this petal goes with it under here, so I'm going to get that filled in too. So the more you do it, you're going to go, oh, I missed one. Ooh, I and here's a leaf. Look at that. See? I'm telling you. Here's a leaf here that I missed too. Oh, and that's not the right color either, is it? It isn't. Don't worry about it. I've got the right pen. Let's go, just go back over. See, there are no mistakes. There are only embellishment opportunities. Yeah? 
I heard that somewhere, and it has been my motto ever since. There are no mistakes, only embellishment opportunities. Okay, so now I've got one more thing left. I've got like some kind of rose I want to do. Um, and I'm going to keep him, I'm going to keep him in with the, the darker, a darker, well, that's kind of brown. I don't like that. Oh my goodness. I need like a red. Where did my red go? I'm going to find my red. Here's a coral red I found. This is a tri-blend, but it's got the bullet nib and I've got kind of a reddish color going on. So let's get him filled in. I actually prefer the brush for a project like this because I can color an area more quickly with less streakiness and less holes, if you will. I know I'm shaking the table. I'm so sorry. I hope you don't get seasick. I tend to do that. Oh, see, and I missed. No, that actually goes to this flower. I'm good. Okay, so get that all colored in. Oh my goodness, yeah. Making it happen. Do, 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 do. And you know, when you guys finish your projects, I would love to see them. I would love it if you would post it either in the comments here or in um, Stamp and Scrapbook Expo community page. You could post it there. Post it on my Facebook page at it's facebook.com slash shop be creative and shop be creative is one word with no spaces um, and B has two E's in it, of course. Yeah. So there we go. Um, I've got that pretty much filled in. Yes. Let's bring this up to the camera so you can see. Looks all right. I mean, you know, yeah. And now I could either die cut that out if I had the die cut. Otherwise, I am going to fussy cut that out. Let me grab my scissors. Where are they? Oh my goodness. I've lost my scissors. Let's find them. Success. I have found my scissors. And yes, I, I am left-handed, if you can already tell, but I do cut right-handed. Why is that? And it's literally the only thing I do right-handed. It's the only thing. Um, because when I was little and I'm in particularly like Sunday school, there was never any lefty scissors. And in grade school, there was like one pair. And inevitably, there's two kids that are left-handed in a class of like 40. And so we'd have to like wait and fight over it. And that's, and I have no patience. I don't know. I mean, you don't know me too well, but I really don't have any patience. And so um, waiting for the scissors was not my thing. So I had to teach myself how to cut right-handed simply so I could finish all of my craft projects because clearly crafts was like one of my favorite things to do and to have me sit there and wait to use the scissors was just not going to happen. So um, now I could not cut left-handed if I tried. Over the years, people have gifted me lefty scissors, my parents, my husband, and I can't use them. I even have like a lefty can opener. That's the other thing I do left or right-handed is the, um, I, op I use the can opener right-handed so funny it's all upside down but yeah um are there any other lefties out there who struggle with this so yeah i cut right-handed plus i use the mouse right-handed because mouses mice mouses mice for the computer are always on the right side of the desk so um we're going to continue to cut fussy cut that out get it completely cut out and we're going to be coloring three sets and we're going to mount that down so let's move on to the next part of this project once you get that completely colored. So I did pop square the back of three of these, pop square, pop square, right? And we're just gonna go ahead and, you know, place it however to vary the little flowers, the positions, the colors, the positions of the leaves and all that. So that's all we're gonna do, quite simply. Oop, I got a little foam square on this guy. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? See, there are no mistakes. There are only embellishment opportunities. I'm gonna do this and stick him here because I got a little something on him. And let's see here, we're gonna do this. I might need to scoot him up just a tad like that. Let's see here. So play around with it. See how it's gonna best fit on your card, yeah? And layering is fine. So I got that. And now I'm going to need to, let's press this all down. Good, good, good. I'm going to need my sentiment. So I stamped the sentiment looking at the set. Where'd my set go? I have a messy workstation, of course. Here's that set again. Um, there's so many different fun sentiments 
on here. I'm here for you together is a wonderful place to be. You're beautiful. Happy birthday. Congratulations. I mean, some great basics. Love. Hello. I'm going to take hello and I stamped it on white and then I'm going to do that fun dark edge to do a dark edge. If you haven't done that, like framing out your piece, you're just going to take your ink pad and you're simply dragging, drag, drag, drag to get it framed in black or brown or whatnot, red, whatever. I pop square the back and then I'm going to, I have my boo-boo, so I'm going to hide my boo-boo and mount it just like that. And I should be good to go. Easy peasy, yeah? Super easy card and you can do so much with it. You can do so much with it. I hope you enjoyed this project. Remember, we do have that die cut. We do have the purple tape that I use. We have the blender, all that good stuff. And in the next segment, I do want to talk about some of my favorite finds of today and some new products that we have just received and I'm super excited about. So um, stay tuned for that. And then, of course, our show specials. Let's pop those on the screen now, too. You don't want to miss that um, because it takes that discount off both regular and sale merchandise. So if you're lucky enough to find the sale items, you can apply it to that too in those categories. And I thank you so much for joining me. Let us let me say a proper goodbye. Well, that was an awful lot of coloring and blending and shading and all that good stuff, but it was so much fun. So hopefully you had a good time too. Or if you're just watching and you're gonna do it later, hopefully you took some notes got inspired, and you're going to tackle it at your leisure. That's good too. But I had fun creating with you as always. You can visit us on our website at shopbecreative.com. We've got uh, everything I used and much more, of course, is on the website. You can join our email list by scrolling down and putting your email address in. And also, we're kind of active on Facebook. So just go to facebook.com slash shopbecreative all together, run it together all lowercase, doesn't matter. And we like to do lots of, of course, new products and sales, but we do funny memes and fun stuff like that too, to get you through the day. So make sure you follow us and join us. We're also on Instagram. So um, thanks again for joining us. This is so fun to do this. Can't wait to see you back in person again someday soon at a show near you. But in the meantime, we're just having fun. We're having fun. We're being creative. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Hello, Expo Make and Takers. It's Karen from Be Creative, and it's time to go through some new arrivals, fun products, and a little bit of technique. So let's get right to it. So I've got a bunch of new fun product to show you guys, including some uh, pictures that I'm going to try and put in this video as I talk about it because the stuff's so new. I don't even have it yet. Like we haven't even made it. We just arrived and I have not even had a chance to open the package and make one sample. That's how brand new it is. Um, but we're launching it right on time with you. So let's start though with um, a really cool tool. This is the magnetic pickup tool from Spellbinders. Brand new. It's a really great way to um, pick up intricate metal dies, pick up in place. Or if you, you do any foiling and you've got foiling hot plate type dies, they're hot. They're too hot to handle. This is a way it magnetically picks it up and then you hit the release and you can place it back down. So really handy. You can kind of see on the back here. Brand new. Fun, fun, fun. We've got that on our website um, under the tools section and new arrivals. A lot of this stuff is going to be in new arrivals. Uh, let's talk about all of the really great stuff from Hero Arts. This is their new summer release. And like I said, we are literally the first to get this. Super exciting. Lots of stamps, lots of dies, um, combos where you don't have to, you know, pick each piece. It just comes together. And here's some inspiration as well uh, of things you can do with these stamp and die sets. Uh, so many intricate, unique different things they've got going on. Um, I'm just a huge card maker and I just love this release. I think in particular, I love the succulent. I think that's fantastic. What a great coloring surface. Those of you who have taken a coloring class with me um, last year, virtually, I did a um, succulent 
marker class. And I just love coloring succulents because you can just really play with all the different shades of green um, and the different tones. And that's a really great stamp. Here's some others as I'm flipping through all of this that you can see. Um, just really exciting. So do hurry over to get that, that stuff because I know that will go fast and we will try and secure more if we run out, but I would hate to be out of stock. So make sure you grab that. Let's talk about, I know foam squares don't seem exciting, but it is. I do a lot with scrapbook adhesives by 3L because I just think they have really superior adhesive that sticks. It doesn't fall off. Um, and so we've got a lot of new foam uh, dots and squares, micro, this is micro, because a lot of times you end up cutting them down to size, so that's fun. But let's talk about these awesome circle and star uh, circle frames. The circle frames are great. Here's a couple samples. Let me splice that in. And that goes along with, I mean, look how fun you could foil that. You could flock it. You could glitter it. That also will go with the new runners they have. They have an easy runner. So it's a tape runner, but instead of adhesive, just plain adhesive that you would use to, you know, mount your picture onto your card or your page. Um, it's, patterned in either heart or star so you can add borders to cards and layouts and things like that so just go and hit it with some foil hit it with some flocking glitter uh embossing powder and then heat emboss it so much you can do with that so that's brand new as well want to check that out beyond that these things aren't new but maybe they're new to you i would want to tell you about our most popular adhesives that we're just we can't even keep in stock right now the designer dries clear from art glitter if you haven't tried that it's a really great adhesive that dries flexible now that's important when we're doing stuff like shaped flowers if you've done any die cutting and flower shaping and you are adding glitter to the edges of these shaped petals. You don't want your glue uh, cracking when you're shaping stuff. So this is flexible and dries completely clear. Now we've got that huge 16 here, 16, eight, and what have I got? Two ounce along with that super fine metal tip. That's important too. But the 16 ounce, I know that's a hard size to find. And if you're going through glue, like I go through glue, this is a really economical way to go. Um, and of course, our show special of the 20% off is going to apply to all the adhesive, whether it's regular price or on sale. What's some other stuff that I want to show you? The desktop dispenser from Glue Dots. That's just a tried and true favorite. If you haven't seen it, I mean, I know a lot of you have Glue Dots in a box and you take it out and you've got the roll and the, the dots are sticking to your fingers and all that good stuff and you're paper cutting the web of your thumb, all that. But this is just great because you it comes with a dot, um, a roll of mini dots in there, but you can substitute any of the rolls. You can buy multiple and have them at your fingertips. You just really squeeze the back and that's how you replace the roll. Super easy. It pops. And then it's coming out the top and you're ripping it like a tape dispenser. Really, really handy. Beyond that, let's talk purple tape. It's worth mentioning. Um, this stuff is, it's really wide so you can rip it to size. It's great not only for putting it down with your die cuts that you're going to feed through your die cut machine so it won't move and wiggle. Of course, that's great. It can also anchor down stencils with a temporary tack. And if you're masking an area to add a border, like say you are blending. Where did my sample go? Oh my goodness, I gotta find it. It's in here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, so here's my sample of a background I blended and I didn't use the purple tape. Do you see how it ripped? I wanna show you that. See how it rips when you don't use, and this, I used a low tack tape that is supposed to be low tech and it still did this. That's why the purple tape is gonna be your best bet to mask an area, do your blending, and then you're good to go and you haven't damaged your surface, it peels right off. It's kind of like a painter's tape, but a little more tack because you need that. It's because painter's tape is not the same thing, but it doesn't have too much tack that it's going to destroy the surface you're putting it on. So die cuts, stencils, masking areas, really great, really handy. Um, beyond that, some essential tools I just wanted to call out. If you don't have a corner rounder or you can't find your corner rounder from 15 years ago, I know there are some of you out there. This is a really great set. Um, it's a really a basic item to have in your arsenal. And if you don't have it, now is the time to grab it. This is a half inch and a full one inch uh, rounded. You can kind of see the size here, the rounded shape. Let me do it like that so you can see. Oh, you can see me, my reflection. There I am talking to you. Um, that is the shape of the corner. Really great to add that finishing touch to your, 
your cards and your photos that you're mounting onto cardstock. I just really like a rounded corner. I think it looks very like finished, like your project's finished. And speaking of finishing, this is not a tool, but I just want to interject. If you're looking to ink the edges of your project, because yes, I like to corner around my sentiment or my image, and then I like to ink the edges. This is this is the only set you're really going to need. This set has um, the four best colors of inks that are more natural versus your basic black. There is a black soot in here, but it's a little bit of a softer black along with the walnut stained vintage photo and antique linen to ink your edges. Now, another thing I like to do uh, with the antique linen, since it is a water-based ink, I like to stamp with this to do that lovely little um, no line, no line image when I'm coloring. Now, speaking of that, let me go back to our friends at Hero Arts, uh, we've, we're bringing in their contour ink pad and we have some contour ink refills. This is an ink, now how is this different? This is an ink to do the no line coloring, but it is a hybrid ink, meaning you can use it with alcohol markers, you can use it with water-based markers and watercolor, you can use it with pretty much any coloring medium, colored pencils, anything, one ink. So you can do that no line effect where you don't see that harsh black outline. It's just a really soft outline that tends to fade away as you color on top of it. One ink will do all of the different mediums you're working with. So that's the contour ink from Hero Arts. Don't miss that. That's exciting. Now back to our tools. We've got the precision tweezers. These are fantastic because they're so economical and you've got all the different sizes to scrape, scoop, pick up, place, whatnot. It's got it all in there. So rather than just having one tweezer, you can have multiple for whatever you need to do. Um, what else do I want to show you? It's that time of year. Here, let me take it out of the package so you can see. It's that time of year to get start thinking about some of our fall um, holiday projects and the Distress Mica Flakes are just kind of a must-have. I don't know if you can see that in there. Look how glistening and beautiful that is. It's like a chunky, chunky glitter to create snow effects and it's just more vibrant, opalescent, and textured, more textured, a little more old world than a traditional glitter. So that's kind of a must-have. It's a Tim Holtz item. And then, of course, we've got our lovely uh, Nouveau Drops. Nouveau Drops are kind of a must-have, too. Let's pull one out here. This is great to do those water droplets, like almost like epoxy if you want that water glossy top coat dries raised. This is the one that's morning dew, so it dries completely clear. But there's a whole host of colors you can grab too. Tons of colors. I just grabbed these three out of our warehouse to show you. But um, yes, it just dries rays because sometimes you don't want glitter. So stickles are lovely, the glitter glue, but sometimes you just want a little embellishment without all the bling. Not often, but sometimes. So Nouveau drops are a really great way to go. Well, I hope I've inspired you with some new goodies and some new technique. You can visit us online anytime, shopbecreative.com. There are um, all kinds of categories. We carry a wide variety of supplies to inspire and keep you going with your creativity. So please visit us. If you go to our homepage and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see join email list, put in your email address, and we'll keep you up to date on new arrivals, sales, and all the latest and greatest. So thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a crop-tastic day and I'll see you soon.